Hello my darlings, I hope you're all doing very very well, I hope you are sitting comfortably, you are cosy and you have your snacks and your beverages. In today's video we are taking it pretty dang old school. In today's video we'll be taking a look at Miami Ink. How many of you remember Miami Ink or have watched Miami Ink in the past? I can imagine quite a few of you have at some point in your life. For those of you that don't know, Miami Ink was a American reality TV show set in Miami obviously. <laughs> <laughs> it followed the everyday life of tattoo artists working in a tattoo studio. We saw them discuss their personal lives, talk about tattoos, of course. There was drama, of course, like every reality TV show. And in between all of this, we had clients that obviously come in to get tattooed. We had a look at the whole consultation process. Then we saw the tattooing. And while the clients were being tattooed, obviously there was like a talking moment where the clients would talk about the reason as to why they were getting this tattoo. And then of course we would have the grand reveal. I'm pretty sure Miami Ink was one of the first at least tattoo TV shows and kind of paved the way and was a gateway to the many tattoo TV shows that we have had in the past and that we have today. Miami Ink was on the TV channel TLC and it ran from 2005 to 2008. And there was in total six seasons. Some of the tattoo artists that were featured in Miami Ink are still to this day household names. We have Army James, Chris Nunes, Chris Garva, Darren Brass, Yoji Harada, Tim Hendricks, who um, actually follows me on Twitter. That is my claim to fame. <laughs> and Kat Von D. Yes, this is where Kat Von D started out. This is how Kat Von D became famous. She was on seasons one to four of Miami Inc. And then she got her own spin-off show called LA Inc. She opened up her own studio called High Voltage. But yeah, there was a big falling out between Kat and ARMY. And there was like anti-Semitic undertones and yeah, TLC decided to reward Kat with her own show. I j oh, hot mess. But I did enjoy Miami Ink anytime I did watch it, anytime it was on TV. I'm sure looking back at it now, I'm probably gonna cringe quite a bit, but yeah, Miami Ink and LA Ink was um, on TV just as I was starting my tattoo journey. And honestly, like I will always credit Miami Ink and LA Ink for my love of tattoos and knowing, you know, that we could get tattoos that were good because again, probably looking back at this, I'm going to be like, oh right, these are not good tattoos. But at the time, the tattoos that were on this show were freaking incredible. Like they actually had good tattoo artists from my memory. On this TV show, there weren't like half ass tattoo artists. They were decent when it comes to quality and that. And yeah, I really liked how this show focused on the clients and the client's story and what goes on within a tattoo studio. Again, a lot of it was dramatized. Anyway, we're gonna watch a few clips together. The first one we're gonna watch is called Army Jane's Refuses to Tattoo Customer's Penny Design. Why is Army James refusing to tattoo people? Who knows? We'll find out. Like any good business, at our shop, customers always come first. Hi. But it doesn't mean that customers are always right. Oh, I'm Alexis. Nice to meet you. How can I help you? Well, I want to get a penny heads up with wings around it. Penny? That's all you want? With wings. You should at least ask for a quarter or something. <laughs> it has a story behind it. <laughs> Ooh, right from the get-go, I feel like Army is like... Being a little bit shady and a little bit like, I cannot be bothered, you know? Like, I'm getting a mm, attitude from the whole thing. But just, like, watching this is just giving me so much nostalgia already from this little clip. I'm just like, oh, God, back in my youth. About five years ago, my father passed away from a really rare cancer. And soon after that, I came across a poem that suggested that when you find a penny heads up, that's an angel saying hello to you. That's sweet. So I want to get a penny heads up with wings because my dad truly is my angel. Oh, that is so sweet. That's such a meaningful tattoo. And I'm all about these kind of like subtle memorial tattoos. So instead of like getting a portrait or a name or something like that, which of course is completely okay. You do you, boo. It's your memorial tattoo. Like, but this kind of subtle memorial tattoo is just so, I don't know, it's just so sweet. And it's a good way of honoring someone in your life without, you know, 
being super super obvious and then that way you might not get so many questions or people aren't going to assume what it is straight away which is cool it gives you the opportunity to talk about the loved one that you have lost if you want to or if not you can just make up any old excuse you know if you don't want to talk about it you just like oh it's just a silly little tattoo or whatever right i want to talk to you about I it i can't do that why the penny has to be about this big the size that she wanted it was uh way too small for me I don't really do a lot of small tattoos. I like his honesty. At the end of the day, I will always prefer an artist to be honest and say, yeah, no, we can't do this. I can't do this because then it saves you from getting a tattoo that is going to turn out terribly or it's just not going to look right. Army does specialize in neo-traditional Japanese, I believe. So a super small, high detail tattoo really isn't something that he would normally do. So I can understand him being like, nah. I ain't about it. Although his delivery isn't the best, you know, he could just be like, I'm sorry, I don't think I could just do this tattoo justice. I feel like he's being kind of standoffish. I don't know. I'm not looking for something that look, looks exactly like a penny. She I just, sounds it's, settling. It's about the idea of a penny for me. She should get a nickel. No, it's not a penny heads up. I was not expecting such an adamant answer. Mm -hmm. I thought that maybe we would discuss, okay, what is it that you want? How can we make this work? but he was nope. Yeah, exactly. He's not really given too many reasons. He's kind of like, nope, or just do this or do that. It's very obvious that this client wants a penny. And of course there should be compromises on both parts, but this is like exactly what she wants, you know? A compromise would be like, oh, you know, I want a penny and a rose. But then a tattoo artist is like, well, do you know what? I think a penny and a peony would work better. That's more of a compromise, but this is like a, no, I ain't doing it. <laughs> or uh, let's do another type of coin, you know? Completely far away from what this person wanted. You know, I can't do something that's that small, it's just impossible. Well, what about without all this detail? I don't even have to see the wording. Well, you won't see no wording. <laughs> I definitely thought I was not going to walk away with a tattoo. Army James knew the problems with micro tattoos before micro tattoos were even popular. Cause this again was like, let's say the queen said 2006. So I'm gonna say this was filmed in 2006, right? And micro tattoos, the ones that we see today all over Instagram, weren't even really a thing. They, they weren't a thing. And Army's already out here way before his time saying, yeah, this ain't gonna look good if you get this tiny penny small with all this detail. <laughs> People have been saying it for years and years and years. The smaller the tattoo, the bigger the problems. It's <laughs> not really, about gonna, the real gonna, penny. Yeah, it's not about the real penny, but the, there's something that's gonna make distinguish between a penny and a quarter and a nickel. Are you gonna color in it? Because no. if you do like color, it. then the copper will make the copper color like will distinguish color. it between the dime. Cat, would you like to do this tattoo? <laughs> That's an ultimate. Shut up. <laughs> oh my god, that is the ultimate. How dare you butt in? How about you do it, huh? Put your money where your mouth is, quite literally. <laughs> but that is true. If you did it in a different color, then you can distinguish between, you know, what kind of penny it is or what have you, I would believe. I don't know American money too well, obviously, but that's a good point. Kat chimed in with a very good point there. And um, another thing that I want to point out is the fact that she's wearing sunglasses indoors. <laughs> this is just so early 2000s, it hurts because I was one of those people that used to wear sunglasses indoors. <laughs> oh God, it was mainly because my eyes water so much and it would just ruin my makeup and I would just hide behind sunglasses all the time. <laughs> I mean, you would be pretty good at it, actually. She does portraits and she's good at them. And she, you, you, you work the same I don't walk into this conversation. The way Army is talking about Kat or to Kat while the clients are there is so weird to me. It's kind of like, he's kind of like talking to her like a child. Like, you're good at portraits, you're good at this. That's kind of the thing you would say to a child when they're bothering you. <laughs> and like, you want them to just go away and do coloring and just be like, oh, you're good at drawing this. Why don't you go and draw this? You know, I'm just getting weird vibes. <laughs> the client's face is also just not amused about this whole thing. She's kind of like, look, I just came here for a penny. She probably wanted to get tattooed by ARMY because you know, a lot of people did love ARMY so much on this show and yeah. Dude, I'd be down to do it. I think I can do it. I think I can make it look like a penny. I think she I can probably do, do a better job. I don't do that type of work. You, you... What I do is bold Japanese work, very simple. Sometimes when you can share the work, it's always better to, to hand it out to whoever is good at what he does, you know? 
that's a good point. Again, Kat would have been so much better for this job because she does specialise in black and grey realism. An army trying to tackle making something look realistic with his skill set just isn't going to work. I don't think the client would have wanted a big, bold penny tattoo in like a traditional Japanese style. It just, I don't think it would suit them. I don't want to like assume, you know, a certain style wouldn't suit them, but I feel like a black and grey piece would be a lot better for them. But yeah, I still feel like this whole situation has been handled pretty dang badly. But again, it's for TV. Most tattoo studios wouldn't do this kind of kerfuffle. At least I hope not. I don't know. I think this tattoo came a lot easier for me to do because, I mean, I basically treated it like a portrait. Yeah, that looks awesome. Yeah, it's cool. Because it's, it's, it's not really even cool. that small. I mean, it's small, but it's not like super, super small. And it doesn't look like there's gonna be a lot of detail within it. It still looks like it's pretty basic. Uh, well, for now anyway, we have to wait for all of Kat's magic shading and highlighting and all of that, but it's a decent size to me. 1947, is that when he was born? Exactly, okay. he was born 1947. And my work is very thin. Obviously I wanted to have wings because he's my angel. Oh, that's so sweet. Oh, I love how this tattoo is like super meaningful for this client. That's really like just sweet. <laughs> it's hitting my soft spots, okay? I'm, I'm feeling mushy. Oh, lot of shading going on. the white highlights all like throughout the penny. Okay. So that, um, oh, the worst bit, the white highlights. It's really shiny and glistening. It'll give it like that. Oh. Metallic. White highlights are not fun. Really but cool. you know you're at the end then. I'm really glad I got to do your tattoo, dude. Aww. It must be an honor to do a memorial tattoo. It's such a big, meaningful tattoo for the client and then to be chosen to do that for someone, I'm sure that would be like super touching. I don't know, maybe not. I'm sure tattoo artists maybe get used to doing them because they might do them a lot, I don't know. As for the quality of the tattoo, oh boy. <laughs> Hopefully we'll get to see a grand reveal. This is done, dude. This is done. Oh, look at it in the mirror. Oh. No, not the hair! Not the hair in the fresh tattoo. Really? No! No, 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 no. I mean, this person could have the cleanest of hair, but still, I, I... It gives me a little bit of an ick. Like, if you're getting your back tattooed and your hair is long enough to be touching the fresh new tattoo, tie your hair up. If you don't have a hair band, without a doubt, there will be an elastic band somewhere in that tattoo studio, okay? Just tie your hair up, okay? Oh, my oh wow. God. Okay, me. you know what's so funny about this? <laughs> I oh. love my tattoo. Oh. I love Do you know what is blowing my mind right now? Literally years ago, I would have seen this and been like, wow, that is like the best of the best tattoo I have ever seen because the standards where I lived were very, very low. Like you would never see anything like this. Now, this, if I saw this on Reddit or Instagram or whatever, I would just keep on scrolling. I wouldn't even give it the time of day. But this was like a 10 out of 10 tattoo back in the day. It's insane, but it's just so average. It's not terrible. It's not a bad tattoo, but it's like air. Eh. You know, like, there really isn't much definition at all. Like, I would love to see what this tattoo looks like now. You know, like, the contrast in this tattoo is just not good at all. You know, like, it, it's very soft. And that, of course, is to some people's taste. I mean, I'm coming at this from someone who loves bold, dark, high contrast, dynamic tattoos. And this is just... Eh. Oh my gosh. Hindsight, honestly. Like how times have changed and how did Kat get so famous? <laughs> Again, times were different. Well, honestly, that was a blast from the past and I thoroughly enjoyed watching that and just, I feel like I'm having my eyes opened. <laughs> okay, the next one we're gonna take a look at is called Yoshi Flips on a Customer. So I've got a feeling this is gonna be one of the drama filler moments. So in between clients in the show, there was always, you know, some filler moments here and there. Sometimes it was drama, sometimes it was just a humble conversation. Oh, How can I, help you? I wanted to get a tribal dragon. Standard. Okay. Let, let's go for right Standard. Here. Okay, let me try I don't want to be mean or anything, but that's just the typical white guy tattoo back in these days, okay? Like it was tribal or dragons. This was before the line clock rose situation. <laughs> I don't know, man. This this thing looks a little dead. It looks like, dead, a, huh? like roadkill or something, man. Roadkill, oh. bro. I just said more oh. dragon thing. Yeah, man, like 
Like a mean dragon, you know? Not like mean an dragon. iguana. This looks like some iguana or something. An iguana! That, to me, looked like a freaking dragon. I mean, it's a very basic dragon. It was just an outline, but I, we got the point. It looked like a dragon to me, not an iguana. Someone needs to watch more nature shows, honestly. <laughs> Now, of course, I'm getting major. This bit is scripted. We've probably got an extra here or an actor that's been paid to do this. But still, if this was a real life situation and a tattoo artist presents to you a design and you don't like it, don't be rude about it. You know, just be like, oh, sorry, that's not really what I was looking for. I was looking for more, you know, this type of thing with these types of elements, you know, help them to help you out here. Okay, communication is key. You know, a typical Japanese dragon, you know? Yeah, okay. I don't know, these are kind of weird too, man. This is not weird, dude. Not How? Weird. That is literally so a Japanese dragon. What? got like hair on the tails and stuff. What would you want? That's what they normally look like. Are you kidding me? Again, this just shows that it's so scripted because like if you presented that to me after me asking for a, a dragon, I'd be like, yeah, that's it. That's exactly what I want right there. Like, oh, reality TV, man. You don't have any other ones? Dude, dude you don't understand a dragon. I think you, I, I think what do you mean, you, I don't you, understand it? Wait, you hang I, out with the dragons I, or I something? I just about a fairy or snake, whatever, like a guardian. No, dragon. dude, I don't need a fairy. I feel but... like that was a, like, was, was it me or was that like a, a fucking racist undertone right there? Like, ah. Wait, you hang I, out with the dragons? I, oh my God, you hang out with the dragons? Like, Dude. Thanks for the offer though, but listen, I just need a dragon. dragon. Alright, well show me more dragons, man. What the I just want a dragon. Hey, listen, I just came in here, go I want a regular go tattoo, man. Get out of here, I want a dragon tattoo. Guys, problem. Honestly, this fake sketch is just killing me right now. It's so funny how Army just comes in to save the day and is just like, oh, get out of here. Except that the tattoo art is far, far away. Like... I would love to know though if stuff like this actually happens in tattoo studios. Does it like really get this Larry? I can kind of understand now though as to why a lot of tattoo artists do bookings only and don't do the whole walk-in thing. I mean there's nothing wrong with a walk-in tattoo, absolutely not, but I feel like it's a lot less stressful if you were to do bookings only because then you can have that prior communication before you know, you ever meet the client or, you know, if there is a consultation face to face or whatever, that's fine. But that's obviously normal as well. But this whole thing seems stressful. The whole just walking in, asking for a dragon and people aren't communicating properly. Oh my Lord. Again, I know this is a bit, but whatever. Man. Yo, G was not in a good mood and he took it out on the customer and it's something that should never happen in the tattoo shop. We still have to cater to people. It's a business. Yo, G! Oh, yeah. Here we go. Come the fake telling off. Bro, what's wrong with you? What are you, crazy? Nah, no, Kai Sama giving me s. So, what am I gonna do? Bro, you can't talk to customers like that. Don't you know? You're making me lose business. But Kai Sama started insulting me. I'm not care, taking bro. Your What are you talking about, insult? You, you bite the bullet and you help the customer. You don't like it, you're not here. Oh, well. Naughty step. Naughty step straight away. <laughs> I honestly don't know whose side I'm on here because I feel like as a tattoo artist you obviously have to be professional but there's only so much you can take you know especially when that client was you know being kind of rude about the whole thing it was kind of like racist undertones there you know like there's only so much that a person can take but yeah this is pretty much the drama side of Miami Ink and uh, oh god Honestly, watching it back now, I'm just like, oh, this is just terrible. It really is a bad representation of tattooing and tattoo studios and tattoo artists because the majority of them are very chill, calm people for the most part. Obviously, there is a few bad eggs out there. Okay, the next one we're going to have a look at is called No Head Tattoos Allowed, which I'm very interested to watch because like are we having another tattoo client rejection here you know someone's come in for a head tattoo of like their dead nan or something and then army's like no 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 head tattoos honey i'm gonna tattoo yoji's head on the morning oh. the third day in business yoji told me he wanted to get a tattoo on his head no why are you like telling me like what to do i'm not i'm telling you you're not gonna get tattooed on your head no my mom <laughs> It's so true. Your boss cannot be telling you if you can or cannot get your head tattooed. I mean, obviously, if Yoji is like sacking off loads of clients to get his head tattooed, then yeah, that's obviously a problem. You're getting tattooed on company time when you should be working. But if he has spare time and the artist that is tattooing his head has spare time, 
then it should be okay. You're not affecting nobody's business here. And they're grown ass adults. They could do what they want with their body. And of course, Shoji has neck tattoos. He's pretty tattooed. So a head tattoo isn't gonna like affect him. And he's a tattoo artist. It makes sense. I think Ami doesn't want to let Yoji get tattooed on his head just because he wants to control Yoji somehow. I don't know if he really, I don't know why he would really care. Yeah, exactly. Why does Ami care? about what this artist is doing to their head. It seems very strange. Again, this could just be a bit for the TV show because I don't think ARMY would really care. I don't know, like, it's a bit weird. Uh, why can't he get a tattoo on his head? I think ARMY generally has a tendency to overreact. Really? To things. <laughs> definitely opens up his mouth before he thinks a lot of the time. This is not a freak show. I don't want people walking around here with tattoos on their head. This is not a freak show. I don't want people walking around with tattoos on their head. But the neck is fine. The neck is fine, because Army has his neck tattooed, and then that's fine. But you go up a little bit higher onto the head, that's a whole other different ball game. That is not okay. <laughs> what? And to use the word freak show, I mean, again, this is a different time. This is almost like Oh my god, this is almost 20 years ago? No. This is almost 20 years ago that this show started, right? Oh my god, I honestly just feel very unwell about that. <laughs> oh my god! I didn't even like think about it. It doesn't even seem that long ago. Ugh, I need to like cleanse myself. That was just, that realization was not nice. But still, anyway, back almost 20 years ago, head and face tattoos were obviously not popular. They were not as normalized as they are today. And even still today, a lot of people don't like face tattoos or would never get their face or head tattooed because it's a very extreme placement for many. But think about 20 years ago. Oh, again, you would only have the rough types, <laughs> the very heavily tattooed types who just did not give a crap getting their face and head tattooed, but now any old person is getting their face tattooed. And I would never say never to a face tattoo either. I mean, I don't think I would ever do front face, but I would definitely do like side of ear, head area, just in this like little region there. But of course, again, this is the back of the head. This is the back of someone's head. It's not even on the face, but again, different types. Anyway. You're allowed to have a fat lady tattoo on your neck. And I wish I didn't have it. I love my tattoo, but it's just, it didn't bring me much good, you know? I was like, I did it, I love it, but not many people look at it the same way. So whether you think, like some people say, well, I don't give a f what anybody thinks of you, you know, of me or of somebody else. The f up thing is you have to deal with it all. Wow. So he's pretty much saying that he regrets his neck tattoo because it was such a, like an extreme placement. And again, this was nearly 20 years ago. A neck tattoo was pretty dang serious. It's not like today where a lot of people have neck tattoos. Heck, some people go straight for their neck, all right? They ain't hacking about. They're getting their neck tattooed first, which is obviously something I could never. I didn't get my neck tattooed until 2020 and I'd been getting tattooed for many, 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 many years before that. You know, and I had thought about it long and hard. But to a lot of people, it's so casual now. But back then it was not casual. It was very extreme. It was very shocking. <laughs> That's how I'm getting tattooed on my back and head. You're not getting your head tattooed. It's not a freak show. I can't believe he's saying freak show again. Like, I can't. For a tattoo artist in the business of tattooing to call someone getting a visible placement tattooed a freak show? That's just shocking to me. Even though it was like nearly 20 years ago, it's still like, wait, what? How are you going to call people getting tattoos a freak show when you're an actual tattoo artist yourself? I'm going to do it anyway. You get fired. Who are you gonna hire if you fire him? It doesn't really take a genius to do what he's doing. I tell you what, it takes some talent to tolerate your ass. Oh my god! The fact that Army is willing to do unfair dismissal because one of his tattoo artists wants their back of the head tattooed. That's not okay. <laughs> or is it though? Because I'm sure there's a lot of businesses still to this day that if you were to get a very visible placement tattooed and it's against company policies, can they fire you for that? I think they can. I mean, it's, uh, in this day and age, it seems so very, very silly, but I'm sure it can happen. But in a tattoo studio, that's like unheard of. Imagine being fired as a tattoo artist, working in a tattoo studio for having a tattoo that isn't obviously offensive or racist or homophobic, transphobic or whatever, like it's a robes or whatever. Could you imagine? <laughs> if it was offensive, obviously understandable, but like, 
Oh. Look, this guy's getting really serious. Yeah, I'm really getting serious. I don't want people coming in here and watching people walk around with their head tattooed with spider webs and I'm not here to intimidate people. I'm here to make some money. You're in the most intimidating business of all time. Whether you have your head tattooed or not. That's so stupid. <laughs> A lot of tattoo studios back in you know, nearly 20 years ago were hella scary. Especially when I first started getting tattooed. Walking into a tattoo studio was scary, all right? Because everyone was heavily tattooed. I had like no tattoos or barely any that you could see. And it was just, I felt like a fish out of water. But, and I don't know if that has changed. Please let me know if you feel like scared or intimidated walking into a tattoo studio. Because now that I'm like heavily tattooed, I feel like I fit in with a crowd and I'm not scared of everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd love to know if tattoo studios still have that, like, feel to them. I can imagine, like, inclusive tattoo studios don't have that vibe, but I can imagine, like, some of the, like, still going old school tattoo studios are just, like, still pretty scary. I don't know. Okay, the next and last one we're going to take a look at is called 80-year-old woman gets her first tattoo. 80-year-old Annie. Oh, Annie, in a little dress. Little Annie, how are you? I'm you okay. Go. I'd like yes. to have a tattoo. Yes. You want a tattoo. I think so. I think Army is smitten. I grew up. Oh, she said it's about time she grew up. <laughs> Legend Annie. Oh my God, I love her. Oh, I wish I could see more stuff like this all day, every day. The world would be a much better place. I'm telling you. All right. What do you want to get? A. A? Yeah. That's it? Just, just an, an A. a. Well, my first name is Annie. Oh. And I just thought that um, we're getting near the hurricane season. And I think that when you live alone and Stop anything it. can happen... Annie. Uh, I just want my body to be identified oh, in case I ever get blown away. Oh, she wants an A so she could be identified. <laughs> so good. That is just adorable. Like, I just don't... Oh, yeah, I get it. I understand. But, I mean, if you get blown away in a hurricane, I don't think that A is going to help you much, to be honest. Like, the... Hurricane damage is not good. Oh. But hey, great meaning. I'm all for it. Oh, yeah. You see something like this is nice. You like that? Yeah. Now, it's black and white. What if you add a little pizzazz some color? Well, what's your favorite color? Uh, sort of yellowish or red. No problem. I could do like a, maybe a red fading into a yellow even. Yeah, well, th that I think would be nicer. Oh, I just love how accommodating Army is for this woman. Like the penny lady, nah, not having any of it. You know, absolutely not. I don't specialize in this kind of thing. But when it comes to a sweet old lady, a simple script tattoo, which is obviously not something he would, you know, normally specialize in because he would do like neo-traditional Japanese type tattoos. So just doing one word is completely out of his, you know, expertise is, I mean, obviously he can do it. For him to do this is kind of lowering himself, if that makes sense. But yeah, the fact that he's like, I'll do that for you, Annie, anything for you, sweet art, is honestly just adorable. If it's a nice tattoo, not too elaborated, like the young people get it, the young people, fine. But being a dignified older woman, a nice A would be fine. Nobody would be able to gossip about it. <laughs> Bless her, she's trying to be like a dignified, classy lady with a tattoo. <laughs> Which obviously you can be, there's nothing wrong with that. But I love how she's like, well, it's only a little small A, so it's fine. I'm not like the younger generation that are covered in tattoos. Oh no, honey, absolutely not. <laughs> we'll get you started. It's been a while since I've done a tattoo as simple as Annie's, but for her, it's a pleasure. Yeah, absolutely. Oh God, be so close to a man. Oh, that's oh. wonderful. <laughs> Oh, Annie! Annie is a floozy! Oh my goodness, she is having the time of her life. Being so close to Army right there, just being like, oh, to be so close to a man again. Oh, 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 oh my loins are moist! <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but yeah, Army said it himself. He hasn't done something so small and simple in a very long time. But he's willing to do it for this lovely lady. I'm going to get a tattoo. I mean, this isn't just on the spur of the moment. Oh, I have nothing to do. I think I'll go get a ta tattoo. I mean, Annie, honey, that's what a lot of us do nowadays. We're bored, all right? What can we do? I thought about it and I said, hey, this is my life. This is what I want. And if I can't have it now, when will I have it? Absolutely freaking loony. Live in the moment, Annie. I absolutely love that she has the approach of like, better now than never. 
or better later than never, you know, which is freaking amazing. And I hope we can all be very lucky to live up to Annie's age and have this kind of attitude. I mean, I'm sure some of us are going to be far too covered in tattoos by then. <laughs> have absolutely no room. We've all been tattooed. There's no more room at the inn, honey. The fountain of youth that you've been drinking on. What, yeah. what exactly is going on here? Yeah. You seem like you're in better shape than me. What, what, uh, what's I... the secret? What should I know? No, you can't. You're too young. <laughs> I'm too young to know the secret, huh? Right. But just stay away from salt and sugar. Uh, <laughs> Annie, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not the advice we were after, Annie. We don't want to know about the staying away from the salt and the sugar. I cannot. We cannot. That's just not feasible for a lot of us. Snacks and beverages. Snacks. Most snacks have salt in them or sugar. Annie, no. Don't be telling me that. That I need to stay away from that to look like this and be this youthful at her age. I just cannot. No. Annie was probably the coolest lady I've ever met in my life. It was pretty pretty crazy to just sit next to somebody that's 80 years old and uh, yet still be so perky and full of life. Honestly, again, doing a tattoo like this must be such an honor. Like imagine doing someone's first tattoo at 80 and they have so many life stories, they've been through so much and like they choose you to do their first tattoo after being through so much in their life. You know, I just can't, oh, I just find it so sweet and humble and just so cute. Why is this so sweet and just, oh. These are really nice. I know you didn't do this, but. <laughs> no, friends of mine She's getting a proper years, feel. Right? She is having a proper feel. Annie, keep your hands to yourself. That is sexual harassment. <laughs> If the roles were reversed, this was an elderly man touching up a woman tattoo artist, I would be getting major creepy vibes. So I need to keep the standard, okay? I need to keep it fair, you know? Yeah, she was having a proper feel. Thing is, I have had this done to me so many times by elderly people. When I worked in retail, they would always stroke my arm all the time. And I di honestly didn't mind. I didn't find it like harassing or anything like that. But it's just like, why are you touching me? You know, I'm not touching you. I wouldn't go up to random old people and start touching their skin to see what it feels like. You know, that's just weird. That's just weird. And seniors don't have tattoos. No, I know. They just don't have them. Well, first of all, a lot of them can't afford them. A lot of them are afraid that, oh, if I do it, then people will look at me. You know, it's... And do you care? I don't get... <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I love Annie. But again, she's from different times. Tattoos were seen as terrible, terrible things back when she was younger, you know? And obviously as times changed, Annie has grown with that and learned to accept that and got involved with that. Yeah, well, you're a senior that got a free tattoo today. I mean, oh, 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 oh my, oh, Annie, oh, honey, oh. <laughs> Any excuse to give Army a feel or a kiss. <laughs> oh, that's very nice. It's very tasteful. That is cute. Nice that is I nice. Like Great. Oh, that Aww. Is I love that. That's such a cute first tattoo. The thing is, with the placement, it is quite high up. So if she wanted to hide it, she could just wear longer sleeves. So it's a great placement choice for her because she can show it off if she wants to and then hide it if she wants to. I'll see you soon. For sure. Thank oh my ready. lord. Bye. That's it, Army. Touch a new tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a good old slap. <laughs> I, honestly, I just love the way when he was saying bye, he was like touching the new tattoo. Obviously it's wrapped, but yeah, that's one way of just being like, off you go then. I'd just be like, oh my God. <laughs> How dare you? You know it's there. You've just done it. <laughs> <laughs> I truly enjoyed that clip and it just reminds me of why I actually ended up enjoying Miami and Canelli Inc. so much. It's because you saw so many different walks of life getting tattooed and the meanings behind their tattoos. And that is my favourite thing about the whole tattoo industry. It's the people that are involved in it. You know, you have people like Annie getting their first tattoo when they're 80. Or you have a young woman honouring their past father. And yeah, it's honestly so sweet to see. And it's a nice reminder that, you know, tattoos are for absolutely everybody. The only thing that really does dampen this whole show is obviously the scripted drama in between all of it. It's just, ugh. This show could have been a 10 out of 10 if it wasn't for the fake drama, honestly. I'm sure we would all absolutely love to see a tattoo TV show that isn't fake or scripted, that is full of genuine tattoo artists who 
just want to tattoo and communicate with their clients and learn about them and their stories and why they're getting the tattoo. That would be honestly so sweet to see and I hope we get to see that at some point in our life but I feel like reality tv shows that don't have drama just they just don't do well do they like they're just not as entertaining so i can see why there isn't a show like that anyway my loves i just want to say thank you so much for being here and watching and until my next video bye